What's going on everyone? This is Comms Engineering and today we're going to be finishing up the home page styling and moving on to the donation page. So first off, before we move on to complete this styling, we see that there's two M's beside the two files that we have been dealing with and it's the index.html and the .css. What we need to do is just push that to the GitHub. So we go to terminal, new terminal, git add dot git status. Okay, modified. Again, the M means modified here. And then we do git commit hyphen M quotation marks and then type whatever you want. Type whatever step this is. So updated styling home page. Enter. Git push origin main. And then enter. Now it's turned white and continue on. If we ever need to pull it, it's going to be exactly what we have now until we push it again. All right, so now we need to create a javascript file to kind of align and repurpose the photos that we have in the front page home page go up here new file let's call it slide show dot js enter that creates a new javascript file if this isn't working you can go back to the first video and see uh, what you need to download typically for javascript you need node.js which the process of it is listed in the first video so for the for the javascript file we start off by typing document dot add event listener which is the top one for me parentheses quotation marks i'll explain what all of this means later just follow along now comma function parentheses curly braces enter so this is basically a reader when you have a javascript file linked to the index.html or any html page it's going to listen it's going to listen for like inputs so that's like clicks enter typing you know that sort of stuff this add event listener is the main function that javascript allows us to do when dealing with inputs so i commented so the comments in javascript are different it's just two forward slashes right here and everything turns into a comment but Essentially, this is our goal, an automatic slideshow with the ability to manually move to whatever picture the user wants. So let's say there's a slideshow, the pictures are rolling in, and I want to go to the first one real quick to see what it was, and then I want to jump all the way to the fifth one, I can do that. And if I step away from it, it's just going to go from that fifth picture to the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, keep cycling through until I interrupt it. So basically we want a slideshow that goes on its own and we're going to make it where it allows us to interrupt it. I'll show you how it's done. First, we start out by saying let slide index equal to zero. This is, this is the starting picture and we'll do let enter interval ID. This is going to be for our so this interval ID is going to be the speed of which the picks slide at. So it's just going to be how fast these pictures change. Now under this, we're going to start off by making our first function. Call it show slides. Parentheses, curly brace, enter. We're going to type in const, which means constant. And this is basically going to be a constant value. This is kind of a repetitive value that is basically a permanent type of value we can use for multiple different functions, not just not just one. And set, we'll name it slides. Set it equals to document dot get elements by class name. And and the class name that we're going to get it by is going to be slide. Why are we specifically naming it slide? Because the slides were basically identifying this. Identify what slide from HTML we are using. And the reason we chose slide is because here, each of these um, each of these pictures have the name slide in it. Pick one, pick two, pick three, all the way down and pick five. They all have slide. That is the significance of, of the div class name that correlates with this. Okay. We'll make another constant value called dot for the, for the, for the dot of for switching through the pictures and document dot again get class name element by class name and this is going to be dot and under this we're going to do a for loop it's just basically a cycle it goes over and over and over again until something breaks it and we're going to type in let i which is a is going to be an integer so let i equals to zero this is basically the first picture again indexes start at zero in computer science i is less than slides dot length slides dot length is just how many pictures we have and i plus plus this is gonna let i go to one two three four this is right that's what this the job of this is okay so again this is a loop and through this loop we're gonna cycle through each slide and hide it so once one is done the next one comes and the other the, the previous one hides and it's a repeated cycle and also we're removing the active class from their respective dot we don't really need it to be act all dots to be active at the same time so we're just going to remove all of them and do it man this is for the manual mode so we're just going to remove the active classes 
for their respective dots. So this is the manual mode of the slideshow. We're just gonna remove the active classes from the respective dots. This means that this loop is only for when we want to click that dots, not for when it just goes automatically. What we type is slides, brackets, put I inside, dot style, dot display. No, this is just style. Set that equals to none, semicolon, and under that we type in dot, dots, actually. Sorry dot class list dot remove active we're this is only again this is only for the manual for show slides but under this we're gonna have to increment so now we're outside of the loop now we're just incrementing the slide index remember that indexes start at zero so like if we have let's say 18 the number 18 or the integer 18 that would be indexes 0 to 17 so these are basically placeholder okay so we want to increment the indexes of the slides and it's this up here how do you think we can increment that here's a hint right here just one line if you guess slide index plus plus you're correct under this we want to introduce an if statement. If statements are basically conditional statements. It's where you say, if this is true, or if this is not true, then this happens. So it's kind of like, if this, then this. It's a hypothetical conditional statement. So what you do is type if slide index is greater than the slide dot length, then we do, we're gonna reset this to slide index one. So again, what the job of this if statement is, is slide index is more than five which is this we only have five pictures because again slide we have five so under that we're going to display the current slide and set the corresponding dots as active and, and as i as you can see here this is where the automatic part comes in i do slides bracket slide index minus one dot style slide index minus one this is let's say that you have index three minus one that's going to be the second dot if you have index four minus one that's going to be the third dot so we're going to style this display it as a block for now and then we'll style it later in css code dots dot slide index minus one dot class list dot add and we're going to do active since this is an automatic function or this is the automatic part of the function so now we're going to do a second function and in this function we're going to define a, this function is to set the current slide when a dot is clicked. So when you click a dot, let's say dot number two, the job of this function is to go to that picture. Function current slide, let's call it, and we'll have a parameter in here called n. Don't worry about the red line. So we have current slide, and n is a declared, but is it, it n is it, n is declared, but its value is never read. So we need to assign n a value. This could be an in, this is an integer. So first. The most important thing that this function needs to do is to stop the automatic slideshow by from the click way and the function that J javascript uses is clear interval id which is this right here not necessarily the speed just the click okay next thing is we're gonna set the current slide index is equal to n minus one again we're grabbing we're setting the current slide to the respective picture number or the dot number next we're going to display the selected slide index and this is going to be show slide up above over here we're just going to call this entire function into here all right and then we can restart the automatic slideshow once this is all done in here and we're going to do a new function called slideshow start slideshow however this is going to be after this function so the start slideshow is going to be a function you start that autom automatic slideshow function copy and paste that if you want to curly braces and inside of this we're gonna do inside of this function we're gonna set an interval which is a time range meaning a time range to call the slideshows function up above here over every 500 milliseconds which is roughly five seconds what that means is that the pictures are going to change every five seconds so we do interval id we call that again set that equal to set interval parentheses other parentheses and right before the last parentheses we do equal alligator curly brace call the function show slides again inside this last curly brace we do comma 5000 after that we do the semicolon and this function and this is what's going to set those slides to five seconds each now after that make sure you're outside of the function again you can see these white boxes that means you're inside of the function we want to be outside hit enter a couple times if you want so this is going to be the initial setup meaning this is going to show the slides and start the automatic slideshow we just call both of these slideshows again remember hit control save or command save 
the pictures have been placed on top of each other. This is overlapping, but the, the slideshow is not necessarily started yet. So we're going to finish that up and start slideshow. Parentheses and semicolon. Save and let's see it. Okay, there we go. Now it's actually going. All right, now we just need to add the dots and style them. But we're gonna come back to this and we're gonna attach the click event listener to the manual buttons. So we'll come back to this. I'll explain what this is after we style the dots. So we're, going, we're back in the home style.css file. Go and type manual buttons. We're starting off with position is absolute and the width is 100%. So the position is where it is, and the width, we wanna see all of it. We have to, you know, put 100%. So margin from the top, negative 90 pixels. The reason I'm putting negative 90 pixels because that it's kind of the same thing as margin bottom, but 90, but you can do it either way. Like flex and justify content center. After that, we're gonna be placing, after that, we're gonna be placing the dots in the page. So we do manual, I think it was, so yeah, manual nav, dot manual nav, position, and again with 100. The margin from the top this time will be 10, just 10 pixels. Display flex, justify center. Can command save or control save. So we can't, we can't see it as of right now. Yeah, let's continue. So now we're gonna add the dots. Dot dots, do border, it's gonna be two pixels, and let's do like solid black. So this is the color and the size of each dot. Under this, we do padding, five pixels around the on, around the dot. The border radius, ten pixels. It's fine. And the cursor is going to be the pointer, which is the which is the mouse. We got to add a transition function here, and it's going to be background color, which is the black background color. 0.3 seconds, and you'll see what what that is in a bit. Okay, so here you are in your um, VS Code, and if we if we look back at what we wrote down, we can kind of play around with this. You should see something like you should see these five dots. These are basically the dots for your uh, manual slideshow. Let's mess around with it and see what we wrote down just to understand. So it's in the center right now. We can move it to the right, for example. Now it moved from here to here. The border is basically how thick it is. So if we change to like nine pixels, it's got a little thicker now. The padding, do nine. Padding is just made a little bit wider. So for the border radius, this is kind of, so we see how these are all kind of perfect circles. If we lower this pixel to like, let's say five, these are gonna be a little more boxy looking. So this basically cuts the corners of it and makes it as round as it can for the function of border radius. Now pointer, change that to inherit. And now let's see what it looks like. I don't know if you can see that, but it kind of moved over here. If we change the width to 50%, not sure why, but so now we're going to move on to the next, I don't know, set of body functions. Now we're going to do dot, another dot active to activate these. So we're going to activate the slideshow function. We're going to activate these dots to their respective kind of color. So in this dot, uh, in this body, we're going to take this background color. Again, remember that if it's white, it doesn't have, it doesn't actually do anything. We got to assign it some sort of function, but we have here a transition. We just got to assign this a color and we just bring that background color down and do black. Go back. We can see that there's the third picture. Now it's moving on to the fourth. And there we go, fifth. And now it's going to recycle back to the first one. There we go. So it's been active the entire time, but we just assign a color to it. So dot, and this one, colon, not, parentheses, another colon, last, child. Now in this, we're just going to space them apart from each other. We're going to do margin, right, or left, doesn't really matter. Do 40 pixels. See how that looks. And they're pretty spaced out. I think that's a good, that's a good amount to have in between. Although you can add more or less. And finally, if we want to hover over one of these dots to know which one we're about to click, we simply do dot colon hover and background is again black, not necessarily background color. What that means is it's moving. I want to go here. I want to go here. It just shows up which one I'm going to click. However, I'm clicking it right now and it's, it's not going to the picture. So we're going to go and fix the um, slide. So JavaScript file. So let's go back there. Looks like we don't have a click event listener added on to this Java file, which is basically just Java's func uh, Java's kind of library function, function that it has in its library of packages where it can listen or it can detect a click. We'll make another constant, call it dots, set that equals to document dot 
get element by class name, it should pop up. That class name should be what we call dot in the index.html page, semicolon. We're gonna put a for loop here. Let i is equal to zero. i, which is zero, is less than dots dot length, which is five. We don't wanna go above five here because in the next function it's incrementing. So we don't wanna go above dot length. And inside of this for loop, we're gonna have the index of dots, which is i. Again, it's incremented, so this is gonna be this could be one, two, three, four, or five, or zero, one, two, three, four. So whatever the index is, we're gonna do add event listener, and we're gonna do click function parentheses another curly brace, and we'll call it current slide i plus one. So in this current slide, so in this for loop, we're basically calling the current slide function, which is this when a dot is clicked. So this plus one is basically this. This is the function that changes the slide. This is what listens to the click. This is all in a for loop, and this is basically saying hey what are you call what what am i looking for like what's the name of the thing that you want me to look for and it's dot so we're controlling and saving that so let's refresh so i want to go to the fourth okay there we go i clicked fifth fourth fifth fourth and now i'm just going to let it go on its own okay so now we have an automatic slideshow of your mosque's pictures and a manual one for you to go back and forth. Next video, we're gonna be working on the donation page and hopefully get to the contact page. See y'all there.